Hey, everybody. How are you guys doing today? This is Jim from The Pain PT. Good to see everybody here today. We're going to continue with this evidence of the week this week, another week. I'm going to bring to you guys each week here as we go through 2025 and into the future, the evidence of the week. And I'm going to share with you through the evidence uh, to show you how important the brain and nervous system is in the uh, construction and the prediction and the perseveration of chronic symptoms in the body, okay, in particular chronic pain and other chronic ailments that do not have a structural physical cause. I really want to highlight the role of the brain and nervous system and some of the psychological constructs that many people do not understand, do not believe in, hasn't crossed their mind, the doctors haven't mentioned to them, and uh, it's getting missed and lost in the translation here. So today we're gonna to go over a study from 2016 in the Journal of Pain. And again, this is a really good study because again, it pulls data from multiple studies. It's not just one study, it, it's pulling data from many different papers. And the title of the article is <clears throat> Meta-Analytic Evidence for Decreased Heart Rate Variability in Chronic Pain implicating parasympathetic nervous system dysregulation. So we're going to talk about this today and the idea that heart rate variability, right, is a way we can measure your autonomic nervous system. We can measure that fight, flight, freeze, or we can measure that sympathetic and parasympathetic dominance and which symptom, which system is more activated. Okay, so generally we're looking for higher heart rate variability is more an indication of a stable nervous system, a balanced nervous system, okay, between parasympathetic and sympathetic. And so what they did here in this paper is they looked for research studies that were already done on heart rate variability and in relation to all different types of chronic pain. So it wasn't just uh, fibromyalgia or something like that. They took, they took data from many different um, types of pain and they looked at the evidence, uh, first starting with about 17,000 studies, and then they whittled it down, right? They're trying to get the most robust studies that they can use with the best evidence. It looked at 51 studies of uh, heart rate variability in chronic pain group. And then they took 26 of those <clears throat> that had moderate to high quality data in that, okay? And so the data was pretty good. It wasn't weak. It wasn't one study. You got data coming from 26 pretty solid studies here to give you a sort of uh, overall understanding of what, what they found. And again, I'm going to go through more, a little more evidence about some of this information. But generally what they found from the results here of this meta-analysis is that the data reflected a consistent moderate to large effect of decreased heart rate variability in people with chronic pain, which they say here means that there's a decrease in the parasympathetic nervous system activation. Now, what we want to see, again, I'm going to tell you the answer here, we want to see increased parasympathetic nervous system activation. Okay, the parasympathetic nervous system, remember, is your the, the branch of your autonomic nervous system that's considered the rest and digest a restorative state, a relaxed state. And that branch of your, your nervous system is underactivated. It's not activated enough. It's what they found through, again, these 26 studies. And the data was consistent and it was moderate to large effect size. So it was definitely showing up pretty strongly, which that means a lot of people with chronic pain and chronic symptoms are in that sympathetic branch. They're in the highly activated fight flight part of their nervous system, which means stressed, means their system is stressed. And so let's go through some of the information here again. And what they say here in this paper, it, which is true, is that a balance between your excitatory sympathetic nervous system and your inhibitory parasympathetic nervous system is required to adaptively respond to external stressors, right? To things we're dealing with adversity, things like that. And this balance that we look for can be visualized, like I said, through heart, what's called heart rate variability, that they can measure this through a heart rate monitor. A lot of times now we can measure this through uh, 
devices, even like watches and things like that. And what the, what we know from the data, even from the past, is that dysregulation in your autonomic nervous system and reduced heart rate variability have been implicated in the pathogenesis of, of some chronic pain disorders, okay? And what they say here, which I found very interesting in this paper, is they say there's two general trajectories that could occur. Chronic pain, number one, itself, the chronic pain itself may lead directly to dysregulation in the autonomic nervous system, diminishing the capacity to respond adaptively to threats. Now they can use that word threat, right? And I, I, you heard me talk about the threat is in your brain and nervous system, not in your body. So the word threat's important or word danger, that's the words they use in the research. So the pain itself, many times for some people, they develop acute pain, maybe from some physical injury or something like that, maybe structurally, maybe not. But the pain itself then led to a dysregulation of the nervous system because the pain was considered a threat to the person. The person was worried about it, concerned about it, right? Lots of failed treatments. And <clears throat> over time, that dysregulated the nervous system more, which would then cause the pain to persist, okay? Because of the alterations in your nervous system and the decrease, and again, that parasympathetic relaxed state. Okay, the second trajectory, which is interesting here, and I think this is true for many, many people, the second path, they say here that low parasympathetic tone from the beginning, meaning the person already has this in their nervous system because they're stressed at some level, the system is stressed, they're under stress. Low parasympathetic tone may place one at greater risk of chronic pain. So again, just, just the fact that, you have, that you're stressed, your nervous system is under stress, it's not settled, it's not relaxed, it's not feeling at peace, happy, can put a person at greater risk of chronic pain because of the diminished capacity to respond to sensory and emotional threats. And I love these words, words are important to me. Respond, okay, not react. I always say we need to respond and not react. But when, when you're under stress and the nervous system is stressed and in that sympathetic state, right, we can lose our ability to respond in a good way, all right, to sensory and emotional threats. So again, they use the word threat again here, but there, the threat is not something wrong in your body. They're saying sensory is something you feel, but also the emotions, right? Stressful threats. We lose the capacity. We get overwhelmed. It's, it's too much. Uh, it's too intense, right? It's, it's such a lot of stress that that alone can, can, can cause a person to develop chronic pain and chronic symptoms. I really think that's so important. That's something I see a lot as well as that first premise, which is that the pain itself becomes a stressor that also can dysregulate your nervous system. And then that causes it to persist or become chronic because of the nervous system dysregulation. Again, not because of your body, not because of where you feel your symptoms, but because of this nervous system dysregulation. This is the point I want to drive home today. And the heart rate variability data support this as well. Okay. And this was the first time they actually looked at <clears throat> the heart rate variability data across many chronic pain samples. Okay, so this is the first study that actually took the data from all this. I'm going to go down to the bottom and look at some of the results in the discussion here from the paper. And again, they say here again, this is the first systematic review and meta-analysis of the existing literature on heart rate variability uh, across a diverse range of chronic pain conditions. And again, like what they found, like I said before, was a definite uh, shift in the system towards low parasympathetic activation. And that's not what we want, right? We want higher parasympathetic activation. We want lower sympathetic, which is fight flight stimulatory activation. And they say here that some of the treatment principles that we see out there are not really helping. They say drug, acupuncture, for example, biofeedback interventions did not consistently reduce the, the, the problems in the heart rate variability. Okay, so some of the treatments, if you can imagine people are getting out there, all this, the physical treatments, they're not doing the job of 
activating the parasympathetic nervous system, right? They're focusing on the body. That's why a lot of you have had failed treatments. They're not helping. And they even say here, it says these findings call into question the degree to which current treatment strategies for chronic pain are able to effectively influence the deficits in the autonomic functioning, okay? Known to be associated with chronic pain. So again, this is why a lot of you have had different treatments, all sorts of stuff, and it hasn't moved the needle. You haven't felt better because it's not targeting the problem. It's targeting the body, but it's not, it's not shifting your nervous system, right? We need to get this nervous system, the autonomic nervous system to shift out of a more sympathetic state into a more parasympathetic, relaxed state. And we'll go over a couple of ways we can do that at the end here. But a lot of the ways I talk about on the channel, the things I talk about are ways to get you into a more of a parasympathetic state. Okay. Also, they found here through the paper that, that this dysregulation in your autonomic nervous system from the heart rate variability data was also related to mood disorders, right? And again, both acute and chronic pain sufferers also report depressive and anxiety disorders. So again, now we're into the emotions, depression, and anxiety and patients with pain are more likely to develop chronic depressive and anxiety disorders. So again, this, this idea that some person, some people may be depressed and anxious prior to developing the symptoms, and that could be a risk factor. On the back end, because of this, the nature of these chronic symptoms, people become more depressed and anxious. And then we also see the heart rate variability decreasing, okay, which is not what we want. It means that you're sympathetic activity is going up and your parasympathetic is going down. So we see that decreasing with, with an increased severity of depression and anxiety. So as depression and anxiety go up, the autonomic nervous system dysregulation gets worse. All right. And it said this decrease is not normalized in response to a variety of antidepressant treatments. Okay. So we have to find the right treatments here and realize that again, your mood, your emotions are intertwined with the pain, but it's also intertwined with your nervous system. And they say here the biopsychosocial model of pain, which really is the, is the model that I use here in the work that we're doing, is considered to be the most comprehensive model for understanding pain. And again, which accommodates interactions between biological, psychological, social, cognitive, which is your thinking part of your brain, affective, which is the emotional, and behavioral factors, all of which are known to contribute to the experience of chronic pain. So these are the areas that, that we're addressing, right? I really are addressing the psychological areas, which is areas that most other treatments do not address, right? The social, cognitive, emotional, and behavioral factors, right? And this is what they say we need to target the treatment towards because the other treatments are not doing the job of getting the person's nervous system to shift. Okay. They say here treatment plans should include mechanism-based approaches that target the dysregulation of the parasympathetic tone, right? So meaning that we need to get more parasympathetic activation when learning to work with chronic pain. Okay. And so some of the things like that we work and I talk about all the stuff on my channel is towards, again, regulating your nervous system, getting it back to a more relaxed, calm, peaceful, feeling safe state. So the more safe you feel internally, the less you feel threatened and under threat or danger, the more your parasympathetic activity goes up. The more you express your emotions and don't hold them in and release them, get them off your chest and learn to let them go, the more your parasympathetic tone increases. The more you relax and the less you get worked up, the less you get overly stimulated and overly activated about things and fussed about things and worried about things and reactive to things, the more your parasympathetic activation is, is there, okay? The more you use self-compassion and the more you, you treat yourself kindly and with nourishing uh, self-talk and reassuring self-talk, the more your parasympathetic activity is going to grow. The more you take things in stride, again, you, you don't rush and race and force and push the more your parasympathetic tone is gonna increase. The less you use some of those personality traits that Dr. Sarno talks about, the less you use some of these coping adaptive personality traits that I speak of, 
the better your nervous system is going to be. Okay, the more you get back to life and, and get back to activities that you enjoy and work through them, the more your parasympathetic tone is going to increase. The more you develop social connections, the more you have good, healthy connections with people and supportive connections, the more your parasympathetic nervous system is going to be activated. Okay, the less you stress about things, the less you get worked up about things, the more you speak up, stand up for yourself, right? Uh, don't set limits, set boundaries at times if you need it, the more you're, you're going to be in parasympathetic. Okay, so there's lots of ways to, to get here. The more positive you're thinking, the more positive you're thinking about things, the more positive emotions you have, the more you're going to be in parasympathetic activation. So all these things I mentioned here, there are things I work on. Um, through the brain retraining practices. These are all the things that are gonna help shift your nervous system into more of that healthy parasympathetic tone, which is again, by itself, when you get in that parasympathetic tone, your sensations are gonna drop off, they're gonna go away. So we're, we're not trying to fix this stuff, right? We're not trying to fix the sensations, symptoms, uh, and the way that many of you have been trying, because all that does when it fails, it adds more stress. Okay, what we're trying to do is to calm down, relax, get your nervous system to settle down. When that happens through the variety of ways I mentioned, the symptoms take care of themselves. They're going to go away because they're produced by, right? This is the takeaway from the paper. They are produced by a nervous system that's not in good balance. Okay, that is one of the causative factors to why the person is having chronic symptoms in the body, chronic pain. Hope you guys enjoyed this today and it made sense. I'm going to keep sharing you the data, the evidence, evidence-based uh, information, because that's I'm a healthcare practitioner and I believe in that. That adds legitimacy to the work we're doing, gives you knowledge to help you understand. And then we can put the knowledge and translate that into practices, which is what I help people do through individual and group sessions. So again, we got some new group sessions starting in February. Be on the lookout. I'll let you know when this out that you can join. And these are going to be brain retraining sessions three times a week that we're going to make you do the work, just like going to the gym class or going to yoga. Uh, you're going to do the work, right? So we're going to make you do some of this work to help shift your nervous system and try to get you into more parasympathetic state. Hope you guys enjoyed today's uh, video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel. Subscribe to the channel. And if you are looking for support, want to join the groups or have individual uh, consultation and coaching support, reach out to me. You can find me at thepainpt.com, thepainpt.com. Thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you next time.